Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkles, but we're going to talk about Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons 5e. They're bringing Spelljammer back. Uh, you know, I, I can't really get excited about that knowing what D&D has become. Now, Spelljammer, I did love it back in the day under TSR, but of course, Wizards of the Coast is not TSR. What's really interesting about this, though, is that the uh, folks behind Spelljammer and even Dragonlance, Dragonlance is coming back too, by the way, uh, the people who created these classic game worlds were not informed that they were bringing them back by Wizards. Uh, Jeff Grubb said, yeah, Wizards of the Coast is bringing the Spelljammer setting back to D&D 5e. No, no one talked to me about it. I'm as surprised as you are. Um, Margaret Wise the Dragonlance creators, the ones who were in a, uh, a lawsuit with Wizards. Uh, Watsy is bringing a Dragonlance game book out, and they didn't talk to me or Tracy on that. Of course they didn't. Of course they didn't. Why would they? They're a, they're a big corporation now. Uh, why would they talk to the creators of these these game worlds? Especially since, uh, you know, Wise and Hickman were in a, a high-profile lawsuit. Um, yeah, so we're going to talk about this, uh, you know, Watsy strip mining legacy worlds, uh, you know, while also throwing shade at legacy creators and, uh, you know, having that legacy disclaimer, of course, on their stuff saying that, you know, it was all racist and homophobic and awful and all that, but they're going to go back and, and, uh, uh, you know, strip mine what's there because apparently they can't come up with any new game worlds. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 265,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk uh, somewhat about tabletop gaming. I've been talking a lot about Wizards of the Coast because at this point, they are beyond parody. Now, I have to give a hat tip to Grand DM on Twitter who put these. Uh, uh, these tweets up, uh, pointing out that Jeff Grubb and, and Margaret Wise did not know that their game worlds are coming out. But just to, to put in perspective here with Wizards of the Coast, um, Chronicles of the Crimson Hound on Twitter posted what is supposed to be a parody of Wizards. The sad thing is, is it's, it's believable. They basically said that you know, again, this is parody, but they're like, hey, uh, people have had their parents murdered and, and murder is bad and it makes people feel bad. So we're going to we're going to take all the killing and all the murder out of our products, guys. And this is something they would totally do. I mean, that's what's so sad about this. I think a lot of people fell for it. They thought it was a legit statement from wizards because they keep making stupid statements like this, whether it's you know racism or you know, whatever flavor of the day, outrage of the day there is, Wizards is there with a stupid statement. And, uh, you know, it's 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 ridiculous. And, and the thing is, is that there are a whole lot of uh, new school D&D players who are averse to any kind of conflict in what started out as a war simulation <laughs> game, you know. Uh D and D started as a war simulation, and and uh, now we've got entire campaigns where uh, conflict is discouraged, and you have to talk your way out of a situation, which is fine. You know, it's fine. But God, my my kid was playing D and D. I'm using uh, air quotes here. Is playing D and D at school, and you weren't allowed to kill the monsters. Yeah, you because know, monsters are people too. You weren't allowed to kill the monsters. You had to deplete their hit points. But they don't actually die because you're not allowed to kill anything. And there are people out there now, they're like, you know, monsters are people too. So ridiculous. Anyway, let's talk about Spelljammer and Dragonlance. Uh, Spelljammer is finally coming to 5e. Oh boy, can't wait with Adventures in Space out this summer. Uh, I don't give a shit. I hate 5e. I have zero interest in this. And this looks about what you would expect from 5e, right? The space fantasy campaign setting will receive a free prequel adventure in July ahead of August release date coming from Dicebreaker. Uh, Spelljammer's back in zombified form. <laughs> D&D's popular space fantasy setting is coming to 5e this summer. Uh, Jeff Grubb not, not informed of that. Uh, with the release of Adventures in Space, a set of three books including rules, monsters, and a full adventure. Probably space coffee shop, space prom. Are they going to do space prom? 
Uh, Adventures in Space Open Wizards of the Coast D&D Direct live stream confirming the long-awaited return of the RPG to the setting first released in 1989. Yes, and I had that box set, and I had the Monstrous Compendium with all the, the Spelljammer monsters. The setting is yet to make a full appearance in D&D 5e, but made a cameo in an adventure, Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. The campaign setting slipcase will comprise of three books, plus a DM screen and poster map, etc., etc. Everybody's like, oh, this is so great. This is so great, everybody. Dungeons & Dragons official account. This is so great. And then you got Jeff... Jeff Grubb, hey, yeah, nobody told me. Uh, nobody told me because, you know, you might you might ask for money or something. God forbid Jeff Grubb asked for some money or Margaret Wise <laughs> asks for some money from uh, Wizards of the Coast has made billions of dollars off of uh, their stuff. Yeah, not excited about this. Dragonlance also coming back, uh, being reanimated. Uh, Dragonlance is back with a new adventure and a battle game. Both new products will be delivered later this year. Um, originally created by Laura and Tracy Hickman during a cross-country road trip, the Dragonlance setting became a key product line for D&D's original publisher, TSR, in the 80s. That is true. Um, that is true. Most fans know it from the series of novels written by Tracy Hickman and Margaret Wise. Yes, they were fan-freaking-tastic. Um... So anyway, a new adventure set in the world of Kran arise for Dungeons and Dragons in 2022. Dragonlance Shadow of the Dragon Queen marks the return of the classic setting introduced in the 80s. Why are they going back to the 80s all of a sudden? But now they're gonna they're gonna um, uh, probably strip strip out any any uh, problematic problematic elements. Uh, remember, it was Tracy Hickman, I believe, who posted uh, the reject modernity meme. And uh, embraced tradition, and he got in trouble for that. He had to take that down. People were pissed, you know. He, they were pissed that he was uh, throwing shade at 5e players, at Critical Role fans, um, you know. But now they're going to go back to that well. But as you can see, I'm just going by the art. It seems like it's definitely going to be uh, for today's audiences. There we go, guys. This is uh, Wizards of the Coast. They'll probably make a lot of money on it. They probably will. They've been making a lot of money on D&D, &D, but, uh, you know, old old heads like myself, I don't really care. Uh, I definitely don't like the culture around D&D &D now. I think there are a lot of really toxic people uh, in the fandom. I've seen some horrible, horrible things uh, being done to, to some of the old school creators, uh, you know, in the name of of uh, diversity and inclusion. I've seen doxing and harassment. Uh, awful, awful people that have uh, glommed onto this hobby. People getting blacklisted from conventions, uh, including Gary Gygax's son. Um, all kinds of drama. And uh, now it turns out that uh, Watsy didn't even inform, you know, Jeff Grubb or Margaret Wise that uh, they were going to use their creations again. Very typical. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume and don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to Brewster is eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. So run, 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 run. Oh, you got splatted. No. Wait, oh, wait, oh wait, she wait. was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey, guys. Squid King here, and today we're in a- Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like, I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my god, you got the axe. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Ah! Right where you belong. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica Pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. 
Can't run him carrying trash. And you can get away with one F-bomb per PG-13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap this effer up. Yes. <laughs>